A few days ago, I went to the Lake District National Park in Cumbria. We stayed in a little village called Boot, which is around the area of Eskdale. Now, the Lake District National Park covers an area of around two and a half thousand square kilometers, and it's all mountains and forests and lakes, funnily enough. We were interested in one particular mountain called Scarfell Pike, which is the highest mountain in England at, uh, I think the peak is about 980 meters above sea level. Now, Ben Nevis is the largest mountain in the United Kingdom, which is a little bit higher. If you recall, last time I went to climb a mountain, it was Snowden. Well, actually, if you ignore the one in Japan, but Snowden. um, And I took a GPS logger that I'd cobbled together. Now, I made some last minute changes to that the night before I left, and it didn't work. I didn't record anything while I was there. So this time I was determined to not make the same mistakes. So we'll have a look at the hardware and the results and see what mistakes I made this time. So this is my little box. This is a a Lomo waterproof case. I think I've showcased this before when I tried it before, but it didn't work last time. This time it did. So let's get this open. So it's waterproof. It's got a rubber seal here, which mates with this section. And inside is a big old mess. Now, uh, (laughs) There is a project online by Greg Davil who's doing um, a GPS logger. It's much nicer than this. So I encourage you to go and look that up. I'll see if I can find a link and put it in the description. Uh, Anyway, I've used some blue painter's tape just to keep it all in one place. And inside we have some batteries, which are completely dead. (laughs) Uh, We've got the GPS itself. Let's see if we can extricate it. And also a micro SD card reader. And then just because I didn't want to make anything permanent, we've got an Arduino Nano in here too. And everything was sort of taped together so that it wouldn't fall out. Let's see if we can get that out. There we go. Uh, and that's essentially it, my little box that I slung in my backpack with this facing upwards so that it could reach some satellites. And it worked out pretty well, except for the batteries, which died. So let's take a look at the data and we can map it using Google Earth. So I'm going to go to my places and import a KMZ file. Um, You can convert your CSV to a KMZ, just do a quick Google search and there'll be an automatic service available for doing that. And all it does is take your latitude and longitude and puts it in this KMZ file, but it also puts in your other things too. So if I go to open file, it's just here, open that, and it's going to zoom us down into Cumbria, the Lake District eventually when it all loads in. So these are all of my GPS data points that I recorded. So if I zoom out a little bit to give you an idea of what the Lake District looks like, it's a big old scar on the world there. It's not like, you know, the Alps or anything, but it's lots of them are pretty high up, something like a thousand meters for Scarfell Pike, um, which is where we were headed. So started down here in a little car park just there. We walked through some farmer's land and headed towards the pike. Now, this was actually recording data pretty well. You can see here we've got, if I look at the starting one, we've got altitude 95 meters. We've got seven satellites. One indicates that it has a fix and we've got the latitude and longitude there. Um, And we can click along all of these and see different um, stats stats, data, whatever. So the altitude here was 165 and it was 95 there. So we are climbing, but not very fast. We're taking a fairly abnormal route, I guess. So um, if we zoom over to Scarfell Pike, so this is the peak that we are heading to, you can see there are lots of trails here, really clearly defined ones. Um, Sadly, we weren't following any 
perfectly clearly defined <laughs> trails. When you're on the ground, it's very difficult to see where you are. Um, certainly when we're talking about trails. So this is a river here. There is a trail on the other side, which maybe we should have been on, but we decided not to do that. So we walked along this River Esk. Now the River Esk does carve a very deep sort of crevasse, maybe? I don't know what the term would be, but it gets very, very deep and a little bit dangerous. So a bit up here, if we continue on, this starts to get really, really deep down here. You can't really tell from here, but that's quite a drop and it was a little bit scary at some point, especially here where there was no path anymore. I think the path is up here. And uh, there was a bit over here where there was a bit of a rock slide um, and so the path was inaccessible. In fact, just over here we were unable to climb up here because the path had just gone. So we crossed over and around this section. Now the GPS didn't last. The batteries died at one point. So you can see we're, we're getting a bit closer to Scarfell Pike and then we're over by what are called the Samson Stones, I think. And they're huge, they're like the size of a house, each one of these rocks. Um, and so that's where we ended with the GPS at 367 meters. And that's where it stopped. So we stopped for lunch there. And then, so we set out about, I don't know, 10.30, maybe 11 o'clock. And we got here by about one o'clock, I think. Um, so it's a fair old journey across all of that. There were simpler routes, I have to say. We didn't take them. Um, and we didn't end up getting to Scarfell Pike. So we walked all the way along River Esk here, and we were looking for this section called Mickledore, which we missed. Um, and we were going to go up Mickledore, which I believe is this bit here. So we should have gone up here and up to Scarfell Pike. So we were going to take this route and so we should have found this path here. We didn't. We continued on. We missed that. So we had a map with us, but we didn't download maps onto our phones or anything. So using a GPS wasn't really very useful. And we started to ascend the tongue, this bit here, which is next to Great End. And we were going to go all the way up there and across, but we could not find a suitable path up the tongue. This is, uh, these are all like rivers that come down. So it's very, very rocky, very steep. And so we didn't do that. Instead, we did something much stupider and we decided to climb up this section here, which is sort of like a waterfall, but it was fairly dry. So we climbed up here. It was very steep and a little bit dangerous. Climbed up here and went around here. Uh, I can't remember what this is called, something crag, I think, um, all the way up here. And then we ended just around here. So rather than climb to Scarfell Pike, we ended up here looking at Scarfell and Scarfell Pike, which is fine. I was all right with that. The actual route that we, we saw here was climbing up this steep section. I don't think we can really see it in very much detail in 3D, but I will look. So that... God, it doesn't look too steep there, but it is steep. Um, we were meant to climb up there, but we decided not to. So it was about 3.30, 3.45 at that point. So it had taken us what, a good four hours um, or more to get there. And we didn't want to take a route that we didn't know back because it could get dark. And that's um, sort of a bit of a disaster if you're up here in the dark or in bad weather. So we headed back, but we'd, um, we'd got to a lovely place and saw some great stuff. So I'm fairly happy with how it went. Really, really enjoyed. Um, oh, look, actually, I can see down here at the bottom, just down here, it shows me the height. So we got to about 760 meters, roughly. So we really enjoyed it. It was great. Um, I would absolutely choose better batteries next time so it doesn't die or really approach it from a different point of view and look at how I can record less data. So you can see here, it should be roughly every 20 seconds that it's recording data. Sometimes it will skip that because it didn't have a fix. But yeah, every 20 seconds, not really required. It could go to sleep for a bit longer than that. Once a minute would be fine, really, to get a good amount of data. There are 430 points on here. And so they could have been spread out a bit further along and I could have got the return journey as well. So in fact, when we returned, we followed the same trail back here, but then rather than take 
what we thought was um, a fairly dangerous bit down here. We didn't know when it was going to get dark exactly. Um, so we chose to walk through here instead and back down that way. So a little bit of a quicker return, actually. If we'd gone this way, we'd have had time to climb the peak, I think. Anyway, I will leave you with the very last bits of footage I took on our journey. Uh, that's the one that we meant to go 